Welcome to a journey through the intricate history written in the DNA of Ireland. Tucked away off the northwestern coast of Europe, Ireland's position has played a significant role in shaping its people. Isolated by water and time, this small island has maintained a surprising level of genetic uniformity. While modern science is uncovering many of Ireland's secrets, what stands out is how certain traits occur far more frequently in the Irish population than in mainland Europe. This genetic blueprint, researchers tell us, was set into motion around 3,500 years ago during the Irish Bronze Age. But what exactly happened over the millennia to create the genetic makeup we see today? And how have key migrations, such as the arrival of the Vikings or the Norman invasion, influenced this genetic history? Let's explore the fascinating puzzle that is Ireland's genetic past. Roughly 3,500 years ago, Ireland was entering what we now call the Bronze Age. During this time, the island's first significant genetic footprint was laid. The population that formed the core of today's Irish genome was well established by this period. Archaeological evidence and DNA studies from ancient bones have painted a picture of a society that was transitioning from the Stone Age, with new tools, weapons, and ways of living. But this wasn't just about technological advances. The genes of these early Irish people formed a stable foundation, relatively undisturbed by external influences. Even then, Ireland's geographic position kept its people somewhat insulated from the waves of migration and invasion that swept across Europe. While mainland populations were blending and evolving due to constant interactions, Ireland's remoteness created a different story. This isolation allowed for the continuation of certain genetic traits unique to the Irish. But as peaceful as this genetic timeline may seem, history shows us that change was inevitable. The arrival of outside forces was only a matter of time, and when it happened, the genetic landscape of Ireland would feel its effects, though not as dramatically as one might expect. Fast forward to the arrival of the Vikings in Ireland during the late first millennium. The Norsemen, with their seafaring skills, invaded and settled along Ireland's coasts. However, despite their feared reputation, their genetic influence wasn't as widespread as you might think. DNA evidence shows that the Norse left relatively minimal marks on the Irish gene pool. This is fascinating, considering the violent and transformative role the Vikings played in Irish history. Following them came the Normans in the 12th century and later, the English during the 16th and 17th centuries, who attempted to plant settlements and reshape Ireland's social and political landscape. But the question remains, how much did these invasions actually alter the genetic makeup of the Irish people? While these groups did leave a legacy, the core Irish genetic identity remained resilient, withstanding waves of influence. It's as though Ireland's genetic history is as fortified as the ancient stone walls of its castles, strong, enduring, and only allowing small changes over time. This resistance to genetic change doesn't mean that no outside influence crept in, but rather that the Irish identity, built over millennia, remained remarkably intact. Even today, despite centuries of migration, the Irish genome still carries that ancient Bronze Age signature, more than 3,000 years later. For years, scientists relied on uniparental markers to trace Irish ancestry. By studying Y chromosomes passed from father to son and mitochondrial DNA, which comes from the maternal line, researchers began piecing together the story of genetic continuity. One striking finding is the geographic variation in Y chromosome haplotypes across Ireland. As you move from east to west, you can see a decrease in Y chromosome diversity, with distinct haplotypes dominating in the northwestern and southern parts of the island. This is evidence of long standing regional identities within Ireland itself. The people of the northwest, for example, show different genetic signatures from those in Munster in the south yet both have preserved a deep connection to their ancient ancestors. But the story becomes even more fascinating when we consider surnames. Studies of surnames thought to be of Norse origin show little evidence of Viking Y chromosome integration in Ireland. This suggests that while the Vikings may have settled and mingled with the Irish, their genetic legacy through male lines didn't significantly blend into the population. This discovery opens a whole new chapter in how we think about the relationship between history and genetics. Despite centuries of invasions, the core genetic markers of Ireland show more continuity than disruption, 
painting a picture of a people who, though affected by history, have preserved a strong, singular identity through their genetic inheritance. Modern technology has allowed us to explore Ireland's genetic history in ways unimaginable just decades ago. Using genome-wide SNP data, scientists have identified distinct genetic clusters that map directly onto Ireland's four provinces, Leinster, Munster, Connacht, and Ulster. What's even more interesting is that these clusters also reflect the ancient political and geographic divisions of the island. The seven main Gaelic Irish groups that were identified are an important window into the internal structure of Ireland's population. While Ireland may seem small on a map, the genetic differences within its borders are surprisingly detailed. Most Irish people fall into one major genetic group that shows a close relationship with the people of the Orkney Islands off Scotland's coast. This is where we see evidence of Norwegian ancestry from Viking times, linking Ireland to both Scotland and Norway. Despite Ireland's relative isolation, its genetic story is closely intertwined with the rest of Britain, particularly in the northern and western regions. But while these connections exist, the genetic makeup of the Irish remains distinct. This fine-scale population structure gives us a deeper understanding of how geography and politics have shaped Irish identity down to the very DNA of its people. As we dig deeper into the genetic structure of Ireland, it becomes clear that there are strong ties to Scotland. This shouldn't be surprising, given the shared history, culture, and language of the two nations, particularly in the Gaelic-speaking regions. Scientists have found genetic links between Northern Ireland and Scotland, indicating a long-standing connection that goes beyond mere proximity. These genetic similarities are most pronounced in the north of Ireland and the Gaelic-speaking highlands of Scotland. In fact, many of the genetic signatures found in Northern Ireland closely match those found in Scotland's west coast and the Hebrides. These regions were historically linked by migration and cultural exchange, and the genetic data supports the idea that there has been continuous movement between these two areas for centuries. Yet, despite these close ties, Ireland has maintained a unique genetic identity, one that sets it apart not only from Britain but from the rest of Europe as well. The people of Northern Ireland, in particular, show a blend of Irish and British ancestry, reflecting centuries of complex interactions between these two islands. This connection continues to shape the genetic landscape of both nations today. One of the most fascinating aspects of Ireland's genetic history is the identification of gene flow barriers regions where populations have remained more genetically distinct. These barriers, detected through MS analysis, reveal how geography has influenced migration and interbreeding over centuries. In Ireland, these barriers align with areas of historical and geographic isolation. For example, the west coast of Connacht, near the Leinster-Munster border, and within Ulster, are regions with low levels of gene flow. This means that people living in these areas were less likely to intermarry with outsiders, preserving distinct genetic traits over time. However, there are also corridors of high migration, such as between northeast Ulster and southwest Scotland. This gene flow suggests a long standing connection between individuals of shared Irish and British ancestry, particularly along the Irish Sea. These migration routes were likely influenced by trade, warfare, and cultural exchanges and they've left a lasting imprint on the genetics of both regions. In a sense, Ireland's genetic history is a tapestry woven from both isolation and connection, with certain areas preserving ancient genetic signatures while others reflect centuries of movement and change. So, where do these Irish clusters come from? Using advanced admixture analysis, scientists have been able to trace the origins of these genetic groups back to various European populations. Surprisingly, about 80% of the ancestry in these clusters comes from regions in France, Belgium, Denmark, and Norway. This is particularly striking because it highlights Ireland's relative isolation from mainland Europe. Unlike Britain, which shows higher levels of Germanic ancestry, Ireland's genetic makeup has remained relatively untouched by Saxon or other Germanic influences. Instead, the Irish genetic story is one that is deeply rooted in the northwest of Europe with French ancestry being the most prominent, particularly from the northwestern region of France. Interestingly, Norwegian ancestry also plays a significant role, reflecting the Viking influence on Ireland's coasts. 
This mix of influences has created a unique genetic profile that sets Ireland apart from its neighbors. Even within the Irish clusters, there are variations in the proportions of ancestry, with some regions showing higher levels of Scandinavian or British influence. These differences give us a deeper understanding of how Ireland's genetic landscape has been shaped over thousands of years. The story of the Vikings in Ireland is well known, but how much of their genetic legacy remains? According to recent studies, the answer is, quite a bit. Norwegian ancestry is a significant component of many Irish genetic clusters, particularly in the northwest and along the coasts. This is consistent with historical accounts of Viking raids, settlements along Ireland's shores during the Viking Age. What's intriguing is that this Norwegian genetic influence is not only found in Ireland but also in Scotland and the Orkney Islands. These regions, all heavily affected by Norse invasions, share a common thread of Viking ancestry. However, the extent of this ancestry is more significant in Ireland than initially thought, with up to 20% Norwegian genetic influence in certain Irish populations. This doesn't mean that Ireland was flooded with Viking settlers. Rather, it suggests that those who did come left a lasting genetic impact, particularly in coastal regions. Interestingly, the same analysis shows that there's also a reverse flow of Irish and Scottish ancestry back into Norway, particularly in its western regions. This suggests that the movement between Ireland, Scotland, and Norway wasn't just one way. The Vikings didn't simply invade, they also took with them people, culture, and genes from Ireland back to Scandinavia. The DNA evidence highlights this exchange, painting a more nuanced picture of the Viking Age. It wasn't just about conquest, it was about blending cultures, families, and ultimately, genes. The impact of these migrations has resonated down through the centuries, leaving a Viking fingerprint on the modern Irish genome. As we dive deeper into Ireland's genetic history, another fascinating aspect emerges the identification of specific genetic barriers and corridors of migration. While Ireland may seem geographically small, certain regions exhibit unique patterns of genetic isolation, where people historically had less interaction with outside groups. Using advanced techniques like estimated effective migration surfaces, researchers have uncovered several regions in Ireland where low levels of gene flow have kept populations relatively genetically distinct over time. The western coast of Connet and the Leinster-Munster border are two such areas where genetic isolation is particularly pronounced. This means that for generations, these communities likely intermarried locally, preserving genetic traits unique to their regions. Ulster, too, shows signs of genetic distinction, but what's particularly interesting is that it extends into Scotland. This genetic connection highlights the deep historical ties between Northern Ireland and Scotland, particularly during periods of migration and settlement. The gene flow across the Irish Sea created a corridor of shared ancestry that persists even today. This genetic link isn't just a quirk of geography, it's a testament to the cultural, political, and economic exchanges that have defined the relationship between Ireland and Scotland for centuries. However, while certain regions show strong genetic barriers, others reflect high levels of migration. For instance, Northeast Ulster and Southwest Scotland are regions with extensive gene flow, suggesting a long history of interaction between the two. This is likely due to the historical movement of peoples back and forth across the Irish Sea, further blending the genetic pools of Ireland and Scotland. These migration corridors reveal that while Ireland has maintained a strong and distinct genetic identity, it hasn't been immune to the broader tides of migration that have shaped Europe over the centuries. To better understand the origins of these Irish genetic clusters, scientists have turned to admixture analysis, a powerful tool for dissecting ancestry. By comparing modern Irish genomes to those of various European populations, researchers can trace the genetic contributions from different regions of Europe to today's Irish population. One of the most surprising findings is that French ancestry plays a major role in the genetic makeup of the Irish, particularly from northwestern France. This French influence constitutes about 30% of the ancestry in the Gaelic Irish clusters, making it a significant part of Ireland's genetic story. What's even more fascinating is that Ireland shows lower levels of Germanic or Saxon ancestry compared to its neighbor, Britain. 
This suggests that while the British Isles were heavily influenced by Germanic migrations during the Anglo-Saxon period, Ireland remained relatively insulated from this wave of migration. Instead, the Irish genetic pool was shaped more by influences from regions like Belgium, Denmark, and, of course, Norway, as we've discussed earlier. The Norse influence, in particular, is notable not just for its impact on Irish culture but for its lasting genetic legacy. Even today, Irish genetic clusters show a significant Norwegian-like ancestry, reflecting the long-lasting imprint of Viking settlers. However, these findings don't suggest that Ireland was a genetic backwater. On the contrary, the relative isolation of Ireland allowed it to preserve a unique genetic signature, one that is distinct from both Britain and mainland Europe. The clustering of Irish genomes into distinct groups further underscores this point. While Ireland has been touched by outside influences, it has managed to maintain a strong, cohesive genetic identity over millennia. To further unravel the complexity of Irish genetic history, scientists have used a powerful tool called globetrotter analysis. This method allows researchers to model how different populations have mixed over time, providing a clearer picture of when and how major admixture events occurred. In Ireland, one of the key findings is evidence of a significant Viking admixture event during the Norse era. This event likely involved the mixing of local Irish populations with Scandinavian settlers, particularly in coastal areas. One of the largest genetic clusters in Ireland, referred to as Northern Ireland II, in genetic studies, shows evidence of an admixture event that took place about 11 generations ago. This corresponds roughly to the Viking Age and reflects the deep genetic mixing that occurred during this period. Interestingly, this admixture involved two distinct ancestral sources, contributing 34% and 66% of the ancestry, respectively. The mixing of these groups created a new genetic layer in the Irish population, one that continues to influence the genetic landscape today. Yet, while most settled Irish populations reflect this history of admixture, there's a stark contrast when it comes to Irish travelers. This nomadic group shows much higher levels of genetic differentiation from the settled Irish population. Their genetic structure suggests that they have remained relatively isolated from the broader Irish gene pool, maintaining distinct genetic traits that set them apart. This distinction between settled Irish populations and travelers provides a fascinating glimpse into the diversity within Ireland itself, revealing a complex tapestry of genetic histories that continues to unfold. As we've journeyed through the genetic history of Ireland, it's clear that the story written in Irish DNA is one of both isolation and connection. From the ancient Bronze Age foundations of the Irish genome to the subtle but enduring impacts of Viking and Norman invasions, Ireland's genetic landscape is a testament to the resilience of its people. Even as migrations and invasions swept across the island, the core genetic identity of the Irish remained remarkably intact, shaped by the geography and history of the land itself. Ireland's genetic story is not one of uniformity, however. The fine-scale structure within the Irish population, the genetic links to Scotland, and the unique heritage of Irish travelers all point to the rich diversity that exists within this small island. As science continues to uncover more details about Ireland's genetic past, we are reminded that the history of a people is not just written in books, but in their very genes. Ireland's genetic heritage is a living legacy, connecting the past to the present and offering a window into the fascinating interplay between history, geography, and biology.